Hey friend, have you ever been in a situation that was so bad, that was so uh, dire that it could be called an emergency? Maybe not just you, but a family circumstance. Maybe something that you wished you could control, something that you wish you could bring you and those you loved out of, but you didn't seem to have any recourse. You didn't seem to have any way out. I'm Mike McCurry. This is Bible Tract Echoes. And today we are going to look at a Bible account from the book of Mark in chapter number nine that might be familiar to you, might be one that you've heard before, but might just strike a chord and cause you to say, I've been there. Not the exact same way, not with the exact same circumstances, but I know what it's like to need to get to Jesus. That's what we find today in the Bible. Mark chapter number nine, I'm going to ask you if you have a Bible nearby to grab it. Otherwise, you can listen as I read aloud in just a moment. Before I do that, I'd like to ask you in the coming days, maybe sometime later this month, maybe early next month, I'd like to do a frequently asked questions broadcast and see if there's anybody that has a question or two about our ministry that maybe I have never answered on this radio program. Of course, Bible Tract Echoes is the uh, is a is an arm, is a ministry part of Bible Tracts Incorporated, a ministry that I'm privileged to direct, and I'd love to answer your questions. If you have a question about our ministry, I'd love to hear from you. My cell number is 309. I want you to text me at 309-316-7240. Again, that's 309-316-7240. Text me your question, and maybe, just maybe, we'll try to feature it on the broadcast. Mark chapter number 9, I'm grabbing my Bible right now. We're going to look at verse number 14. The Bible says this, And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. And he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out. And they could not. He answered him. Jesus answered this father, distraught, just absolutely racked with grief for his young son. He answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child, and oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us." Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. Now, today on the broadcast, it's likely that I'm talking to some folks that have dealt with hard, difficult circumstances. 
It may be that you have been shackled by, you've been pressed down, you've been under some circumstances that feel like they're going to tear you apart. And maybe you've done all you can. Maybe you have even asked for help from others. Maybe it's something that your family knows about or maybe they don't. But regardless, you feel like you are at the end of your rope. You feel like this father here. Nothing that can be done to your knowledge. But I, if I can, would I give you just a little glimmer of hope. It's actually not a little glimmer. It's not just a little ray of sunshine. It's the bright and morning star. It's Jesus Christ. You see the son of righteousness, the high priest, the prince of peace, the wonderful counselor, mighty God is always accessible. You know, there are some religions of the world that tell you like this father did that you would have to go through an intermediary that to get to God, you need to talk to some man of the cloth. You, you need to talk to someone that supposedly, presumably, has more access than you do. Well, the Bible does not say that. You have the ability to get straight to the God of all eternity. You have access to the throne of grace. I think of James 4, 6. But he giveth more grace. It could well be that you're in a circumstance right now that you feel absolutely drowned. You feel like you can't catch your breath. You feel like if you just stop treading water for a moment, you'll be swept under and you'll never, never come back up. May I tell you, friend, God cares for you. I referenced yesterday on the broadcast, uh, Mark chapter 4, when those disciples panicked, frantic, came to Jesus while the storm was tossing their little boat to and fro. They came to Jesus and asked, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Maybe you feel the same. Maybe you say, today could be the last day. Today is all I can handle. I don't think I can make it through another one. May I tell your friend, whether you are coming to God on behalf of yourself, whether you're coming to God on behalf of a child like this dear father was in Mark chapter number 9, maybe you're coming on behalf of your church or some people that are near and dear to you, a friend. Regardless, God is a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. His burden is easy, his yoke is light, and he wants to hear from you. You realize, of course, that we were created because of a desire that God has for fellowship with us. That was the reason Adam and Eve were first created. He wants fellowship with us. And yes, because of a bad decision, a mistake that we won't pile on to Adam and Eve for, because we all would have made that same mistake of listening to that serpent. Because of that error, because of that sin, the first sin, original sin as they call it, our relationship was severed, was broken. But thankfully, because of God Almighty's great love for us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Maybe you're listening right now and you say, all right, Micah, that's all well and good for Christian people, for those that think uh, that God created the universe and that he sent us. I'm not one of those. I don't have faith like that. Then I ask your friend, what do you have faith in? What is going to carry you through the storms of life? If you can't go to Jesus, Jesus and say, Master, carest thou not that we perish, what's going to bear you through? Pray tell. Is your humanism going to accomplish the goal? Is your empty religiosity going to bear you up? Or are you done with the rituals? Are you done with the traditions? Are you willing to say, God, I can't do it alone. Please help thou mine unbelief like this father did. 
I ask you, friend, is today the day of salvation, or will you go away like the Roman ruler and say, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian? I don't know what you're dealing with. And I'm not offering you a get-out-of-hell-free card where you just think that, oh, I'm going through a difficult time. I have hell on earth. I need to pray a little prayer, and everything is going to get better. Friend, if you put your faith and trust in God, then yes, things will get better because he is your father. He is your friend. He wants to be right there beside you. But this is not a parachute that you just pull to get yourself through this circumstance of life. This is a surrender. Or should I say more, a yieldedness. You see, when we surrender, we put down our arms, our weapons, but we plan to take them back up again because we've only been beaten down. But when you yield, when you say, God, I can't do it on my own, the battle can be over forever. So I ask, friend, if you're listening right now and you don't realize, like Romans 5, 8, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If you don't realize that you are a sinner, if you don't realize because of your sin that we must spend an eternity in hell, but you're coming to a knowledge of that. Maybe you say, yes, all right, Micah, I'm not perfect. Apparently I'm not. I realize that I can't get away from it. I'm not perfect perfect. If you are beginning to conceptualize that, if you're becoming cognizant of that, and then you're willing to come to an understanding that Jesus Christ died for you, this is the good news. Jesus Christ died for you. For the wages of sin is death, yes. Our eternity, our destiny should be hell, but, the Bible says, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's a free gift being extended to you right now, not by me, I'm just a messenger, by God Almighty. All you must do is accept. You could pray a simple prayer like this. Words don't save you, but believing on God does. For with the heart man believeth, with the mouth confession is made, yes. You could pray a prayer like this, dear God, I know, I know I'm a sinner. I know that because of my sin, I must spend eternity in hell, but I don't want that. Please save me. Please take me to heaven when I die. I trust you for salvation completely. If you have questions, maybe you prayed a prayer like that, but you don't know what to do next, I'd love to hear from you. You can text me right now. I'll give you this number very quickly twice. Text me at 309 316 Seven two four zero. I'd love to hear from you. Text me at 309-316-7240. We'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless.